Hello! This week I'm going to be making some pirate stuff. This is the beginning of a lot of pirate videos. They're not necessarily going to be in order because I have some other stuff that I'm going to be making at the same time. But throughout the fall I'm mostly going to be working on a pirate costume and a witch costume. So those will be coming in the future. But I needed to make some base pieces before I could work on the rest of the stuff. Uh, for a quick aside, uh, if you did not see my last video, I got a new fake tooth so I am filming a whole bunch of intros and outros at the same time because I didn't want to film when I was missing the tooth. But it's also affecting my speech a little bit so if I sound a little funny, uh, that's why. Hopefully I will get an actual permanent tooth very soon in a few months. Uh, but until then I'm going to sound a little bit not quite like myself so bear with me. Um, but. As for the pirate stuff, I don't own any pants and I could be a pirate with a skirt, but I decided that I really wanted some pants. I showed my sketches in a previous video in my July vlog and I haven't yet gotten to do a rendering so that will be coming probably in the next video, but I wanted to start getting stuff together. I decided that I wanted to do a look with pants because I don't usually do that. I make a lot of skirts on this channel. I also decided that while I want to make the version of the pirate that has more of the corset style outfit rather than the vest, I did still want to make a vest because I think it's a good pirate accessory. So I've decided I'm going to make that for Micah, but I will be able to incorporate it into future pirate looks, which I'm really excited for. Also with this series, I'm going to be doing a lot of leather working, so I'm very excited for that. This will be a little bit more of a leather heavy series rather than a sewing heavy series. There will still be quite a bit of sewing as well because, you know, can't get away from that. But uh, if you like leather working and you want to learn more about it, then uh, you can learn alongside with me through the rest of this series. For my base outfit, I had four things that I wanted to make. I wanted to make two pairs of pants, one for me and one for Micah, a vest for Micah, and a shirt that, I don't know, we could interchange. Basically all of these things we could probably interchange because we're very similar sizes, but for these specifically, I had the two pairs of pants, a vest, and a shirt that I wanted to make. I was halfway through making this when I realized that making all four of these in one video is probably a little bit too much. So for this video, I did the pants and the vest. For my pants, I wanted to do something that was a little bit more versatile that I could use as general like adventuring pants. So I have some green corduroy that I made pants out of for, the, for myself, whereas Micah's are gonna be a lot more pirate inspired, but that'll come in a different video. I think that's pretty much it for prefacing everything that's going on. So let's go look at the patterns. This is the pattern I'm going to be using for our costumes. This is Simplicity 4923 and it's like the Jack Sparrow Pirates of the Caribbean costume. So basically for my stuff I'm going to be using this to make the shirt and then for Micah's stuff I'm going to use this to make the vest and also his pants. For my pants I'm going to be using a different pattern and that is the Inez pattern from Tint of Mint on Etsy. So I just wanted something that was a little bit more versatile, I guess, because I can also use these for like generic adventuring pants, I guess. <laughs> Micahs are going to be a little bit more specific to pirates, but hopefully he can use them for other stuff as well. They're just going to be a little bit more costumey because they've got a fall front closure rather than like a zipper fly. Today I'm going to be cutting everything out and I... I have fabric for the shirt and both of the pants. I gotta figure out what fabric I'm using for the vest. So let's get cutting. alteration on this pocket and hopefully this makes sense but the way that they have it if you use this pocket pattern this little corner is going to show on like the outside the pants pattern is slashed here so that it has like an exposed pocket there so like when you sew this together it's not like a smooth line from waist all the way down there's like a little slash like angle here so the way that that would work is much of the pocket bag would be showing and I don't really want to make my pockets out of this corduroy because it's it's kind of hefty and it's going to feel weird. I like I don't want to make a pocket out of corduroy. So what I've done is I've altered this so that there's a pocket facing so I can cut just this little edge out of the corduroy and that will be what shows on the side seam of the front piece. And then the rest of this I'm going to cut out of a quilting cotton because I don't have any pocketing 
just on hand. You want to use something that's a really tight weave so that stuff doesn't kind of poke into your pocket and cause holes. I'm going to use quilting cotton. It'll be fine. I'm, I don't usually stick that much in my pockets anyways. So that is just my fix for how to make it so that I don't have to cut this out of corduroy or a, like a hefty fabric but I can still make it so that what is showing is still nice and not like pocket bag showing on the side seam. <laughs> the fly so like the opening in the front of the pants I'm going to do a button fly rather than a zipper fly which is what the instructions are for so it's fairly similar it just means that before I attach the two sides of the front piece together I have to stitch the buttonholes in because I'm not gonna be able to do it afterwards the buttons I can save for the very end because the, it's easy to hand sew buttons on even if there's a bunch of crap in the way so basically I just sew the fly shield onto this and it'll get flipped under like that and then the other side gets the fly facing. Uh, this is a big piece of fabric that'll get folded in half and attached but first I'm going to do this so I can stick buttons holes in it. Partially stylistic choice and then also I just I don't have a short zipper for the front fly and I also don't want to install a zipper because they're annoying uh, so instead I'm just going to do buttons. For the button placement, I've just kind of guesstimated what I'm going to do. So this is where the waistline is. This is where it's going to get stitched to the waistband. So I did one button an inch down because this will also get another button up here. And that'll probably be about an inch and a half. So with that, I decided an inch and a half was probably a good amount because from where this first button was down to like, I don't know, almost where it's going to get stitched together. Uh, there it's six inches so i figured that was an easy way to split one and a half so i did one and a half one and a half one and a half and then at this last one and a half i would never be able to get a button bunched down there anyways so i just left it uh how it is because this is going to get stitched up right here and then i made them three quarters of an inch because that i don't know I, that was just how much fit onto the fly shield i think an inch is going to be a little overkill so I think that three quarters of an inch should be enough. I have not actually figured out what buttons I'm gonna do yet for this so I can kind of pick buttons based on what fits into these buttonholes. So let's go make buttonholes. Okay, the fly is done. I can go ahead and put the rest of the pants together and it's very simple. Like everything's fairly straightforward from here on out. I just put like the center back together and then the sides together. Um, I might stick an extra pleat into the front here because I think the waist is gonna be quite, quite wide on me. Um, just from measuring from side to side in the front, it's already like 26 inches and that's uh, that's too large for me. So um, I think that I'll probably take a pleat in here and then my solution Originally for the waistband being too wide was I was gonna stick elastic in the center back Probably still stick elastic in the back half of the waistband so that it cinches in a little bit better But I think I am gonna need to also take the front in a little bit. So we're just gonna keep going um, Everything else should be pretty quick Oh, it does say to do the center back before you do the darts. That's silly. Do the darts first. It'll be much easier. All right, so I tried them on and I was right. The front is definitely way too big. Uh, so I put these two pleats in it, but then I was looking at the directions and it says to put pleats in it anyways. Like it says, then we need to create two darts at the back and two pleats at the front from the excess fabric left. Uh, 
so I'm kind of confused by that because it definitely is not on the pattern at all. There's like nothing to mark pleats out. So I, I don't know what's going on. I just put these pleats in while I was wearing it. I just kind of approximated and that's good enough. So I think that the legs are also still just too wide, but I'm gonna put the waistband on and check all of that first. And then I'll see if maybe I can figure out if the legs look too wide because I have a feeling that this is gonna look a lot less like a bag on my body when it's got the waistband on it. So I'm gonna do that first. Then I'll check the legs again and I think I'm gonna have to take it in just from the outside. I already took it in a bit from the inside of the leg. I did probably about an inch taken in all the way down, uh, like kind of blended up into the crotch area. And that helped some, but I think it needs to be taken in more cause it's just, it's very large on me. The hips fit perfectly, so there is that. It's a good fit on my hips. Um, my hip measurement is about 41 inches and I think it said that the size that I cut was for about 43 inches. So it it's comfortable and it gives me a little bit of space, so that's nice, um, but everything else is too large and I don't know, I guess I could have alter the pattern, but I wanted to see how it fit just like as the straight size. Like I knew from the side chart that it was gonna be too large everywhere else, but I was curious because I also wanted to see if maybe I could just stick an elastic in the back waistband, but it seems like most of the extra was added to the front rather than evenly all the way around. But we're going, we can figure it out. So I'm gonna stick the waistband on here. I think I have to make the, um, the belt loops first. So do that real quick. Whiny girl, what a whiny girl. gotten it all stitched around the neckline on the arm side and the center front and then the next thing the instructions say to do uh, as kind of part of that whole stitch was to stitch along the hem but I, I don't know that seems kind of odd to me I would rather do the hem up last because usually the hem goes up last and if I leave the hem open now that makes it so that I can stitch the sides together so then I can stitch these together and it goes together really easily rather than having to like kind of turn it into a weird donut and struggle with it and then having to like slip stitch part of it. I would much rather hand stitch part of the hem than have to hand stitch the side seam because the hem doesn't really get much uh, strain whereas the side seam has to hold the garment together. <laughs> So that's what I'm gonna do instead. I still need to press all of this out, but I just wanted to let you guys know that that was what was happening instead of following the directions. I've 
then the side seam all closed up right now I'm pinning the hem together so because the front and the back are two different lengths like the front is a lot longer than the back I decided that I want to machine stitch it so that this like side front seam is also machine stitched so I'm gonna do a machine stitch from the center front on the front panel up the side front panel and then a little bit into the back panels I'm not gonna do entirely all the way because I do need to be able to like flip it out but once I flip it out I can hand stitch the little bit that is left open on the center back that's what I'm doing right now is I'm just pinning these and then once that's all stitched up I can just pull it hopefully right out of the center back hem turned out I think the pants are a little bit too big but honestly I think that's okay because it contributes to like the grandpa hobbit kind of vibe and like the pirate just finding things and wearing them kind of vibe so I'm okay that they're kind of big honestly a lot more comfortable if they are too large uh I don't really like wearing pants that fit me perfectly unless they are sweatpants <laughs> so I actually kind of prefer that they're too big I do think this pattern was a good pattern like the shape of the pattern was really good the instructions were a mess like i don't know what was going on with this person when they wrote these instructions they don't have you put in the back darts or the front pleats until you are already putting the waistband on which makes no sense you should do that kind of like decorative or fitting treatment before you even put anything together so like your pleats should definitely come before you even put the pants together it's very strange to put pleats and darts in after your pants are already assembled i'd say the only things that would come before doing pleats or darts is installing the pocket and like that's just because it's easier to put in a pocket when everything is flat so you put in the pocket and then you do the things that make your piece of fabric not quite so flat anymore but by the time that your pants are already together and they're like a tube that splits into two tubes and you're putting the waistband on you should definitely already have the darts and the pleats in there so i i'm kind of confused about her instructions on that part the other thing is that she never marked the pleats in the pattern i was really confused that she had pleats in there at all until I read past the directions because I would have expected them for one to be on the pattern because the dart is marked on the pattern but also I would have expected them to be in her instructions like I just mentioned before putting the pants together so by the time I got the pants together and I tried them on I was like this is gonna be way way too big like the waist was 
I think 30 inches just in the front waist, which is odd for the size that I cut, but I made like kind of the executive decision myself to put pleats in the front to make it fit better. Fast forward to when I'm reading the instructions to put the waistband on and they're like, now is the time to put the pleats in. I'm like, no, the time to put the pleats in was like three steps ago. I've already put the pleats in and now I need to put the waistband on. Um, other than that, the instructions were pretty good. The other thing that I changed personally was that I did a button fly instead of a zipper fly. I thought it looked more like the aesthetic I was going for and I also didn't feel like installing a zipper. I also didn't have a zipper that short, so you know, lots of factors contributed to me wanting to do buttons rather than a zipper. For the vest, I followed the instructions and cut everything fairly exactly. I don't think there was anything really that I changed besides doing the last few stitches differently. So like I mentioned before, instead of just going all the way around the perimeter and leaving the side back and the like center back hem free, I did it a little bit differently, but I explained it earlier. So just rewatch that <laughs> rather than me explaining it again. Uh, that was really the only change I made on the vest. It's a commercial pattern from Simplicity. So usually those are pretty good as far as their order of steps and their patterns. Um, the pants from Etsy could use some work, but if you already kind of know what you're doing and you don't need instructions to put pants together, you just want a pattern that will get you the right fit, then I would say that's a good one to start with. And that, I think everything went really well. Uh, I got my buttons from Joann's, kind of scrambling at the last minute because I had not thought about buttons at all. And <laughs> I was really lucky that I was able to get most of them on clearance. Um, in the future, I will think ahead with buttons so I can buy them from a cheaper place than Joann's. <laughs> I also have pants for Micah that I want to make. They are also a part of that same simplicity pattern. They're going to be more fall front trousers rather than a uh, fly. And I also want to make a shirt from that same pattern. Uh, eventually, I want to do an entire video that compares all of the different pirate shirt patterns that exist in the world um, because I've now tried three, I think, three or four. And uh, there's another one from a big four pattern that I wanna try and a couple other smaller ones. So eventually that will come. I just need to make more pirate shirts, I guess. I have lots more pirate stuff coming throughout the rest of the fall. So keep an eye out for that. Got a lot of leather working, which I'm super excited for. I'm really excited to do some other leather working stuff. And I'm also gonna make a pirate hat. So uh, we're gonna try millinery with leather. That will be an absolute first for me. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Um, but if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, if you've tried this pattern before and you also found it weird or you found it not weird, let me know. I would love to hear from you guys. And if you want to see the rest of the pirate outfits and like me wearing them eventually when I go to the Renaissance Festival, then please subscribe to my channel. I'd love to see you guys in the next video. Okay, bye.